Today, we've got Trappy here with us to introduce some new TBS products. So we've got a bit here on the table. So we're going to go through each one bit by bit so that you know exactly what we've got. Uh, Trappy, did you want to give everyone who might not know who you are a bit of background? Uh, I'm Trappy and I'm from TBS. We've been flying um, FPV ever since pretty much day one of FPV. Uh, we started with the flying wings and then went into the multi-rotors. Um, yeah, we've make, made some pretty cool videos along the way, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think we all know all those TBS videos and that's originally what got me into FPV. So um, let's start on and, and have a look. Um, so I was playing with the ground station the other day and uh, I was looking at the Yagi and I was trying to work out what's the DBI on the Yagi and how far could I actually get if I was flying. The DBI on this Yagi is 11 yeah. um, and it will give you about 15 to 20 kilometers of range. It's, it's a linear polarized antenna, so actually you should be mounting it the other way. Um, so like this, you're running it horizontally polarized, which means on your plane, you, the antenna needs to stick out on the side. Um, once you mount the antenna vertically, you need to flip the Yagi 90 degrees. Okay. Well, um, I was also wondering what kind of antenna should I be using? On, on the plane? No, on my transmitter. Um, yeah, on the on the transmitter, you just use a regular linear polarized antenna. It's That'll a be standard fine. dipole. Yeah, no just a standard dipole. Yeah. Awesome. And so on the ground station, when I was playing with it, there was a few things on the side that um, I wasn't quite sure about. Do you want to just tell me, you know, what are these extra ports on the side and what do they do? Yeah, we came out with a, a unique wiring system for the goggles because when we were flying long range, often we would trip over the wires and pull them out. So we use the RJ45, this is your standard Ethernet connector that plugs into the side and it will power and provide video to your video goggles. Uh, and you've got two of those on the side as well as two standard analog outputs, analog video, and a 12 volt power rail for, for your goggles. And on the bottom you've got a USB port to charge your GoPro on the field. Okay, cool. Or my phone, because that always goes flat. Or the phone, yeah. Whatever <laughs> goes flat first. <laughs> um, and another port you have here is a video transmitter port. Um, so that the, the TBS ground station comes with a 25 milliwatt 5.8 video transmitter. Um, you can just tape that to the back of it and then plug it in right here. And then you can have a wireless feed using your regular fat shark goggles. Okay, cool. Because I was wondering why you included this extra in the box. Yeah. And then so we've got some dip switches on the top here as well. Yeah, um, on 2.4 band you only have eight channels. Yep. So that's just uh, your regular dip switch. Channel one does channel one, channel two does channel two. So no color, uh, no dip switch coding. I also found it was, um, felt really tough. Uh, it's got this screen on the back here, but it just feels tough. What did you yep. make it out of? This is um, cast aluminum. So the reason why we use aluminum is because it shields the ground station a lot better. And that gives us about 10 to 15% um, advantage over range um, over over regular RC uh, over regular 2.4 video receivers. Okay, so we're really going for long range with this kit. Yes, this is this is all about long range. So this is what we've been doing since six to eight years, and we've really tried to perfect and make the perfect tool for people who want to fly up in the mountains, who want to fly far and get really good video signal. And uh, so we've also got the plane here. So I was looking at that, and I was looking at the way it fit together. Super cool the way it's two pieces. Um, uh, and I was wondering, can I split it apart and put it in my car? Uh, not really. <laughs> uh, not, or not easily, at least. Um, so we have the carbon fiber spars that go into the middle. Um, and, and they're kind of necessary to, to, to keep it stable. So you could probably cut it into half and, and epoxy <laughs> it together on the field every time. But that's, that wouldn't be very good. <laughs> that's a lot of epoxy. Yeah. So once I glue it, that's it. It's done. Yes, yes. Okay. And... Uh, there's two different setups for the batteries. Now, I've got both at home. There's the 2S battery and then the four, uh, 3S battery. Yeah. Yeah, TBS requires um, two kind of batteries and that has caused a little bit of a confusion. So we've got two setups. One is the um, 2S setup with about 3000 milliamps battery size um, and with a small motor and an 8 inch prop. That will give you extreme endurance. Um, so you can fly the Caipirinha for up to 40 minutes. Um, so that's for your long-range cruising type of flight. And then we also have a much more powerful setup for with 3S, which will give you like the kind of racing proximity style flying that uh, you're used to from our videos. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, 
Now, if I'm using an eight inch prop, can I use a folding prop? Yes, folding props are possible, um, especially with the 3S setup. This, the 2S setup, I think, is a little bit small for, for having a, another folding apparatus on the back. And if I'm launching this, hand launching, have I got finger holes to hand launch? How do I launch? No, actually, you launch it differently. Um, so we usually launch it over the head. You power up full throttle, and then you throw it like this. Um, and that'll give, actually, the best exit. So usually when people throw it, they will kind of twist. Yeah. and then it stalls and crashes. Um, yeah. If you do an overhead launch, especially with the 3S setup, you just give full power and actually you can just let go and it will fly out of your hand. Okay, cool. So no discus launching? No <laughs> discus launching if possible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unless you have a spotter that can do it for you, but it's usually kind of a quirky moment when you launch yeah. flying wings with your transmitter in one hand trying to throttle up. Um, better just throttle up full power and overhead launch. Awesome, yeah, a couple of mine have hit the ground doing that, so yes. <laughs> thanks for clearing that up. And um, so there's a couple of these other bits here, so where do we put these? Um, these are the winglets. We have two styles. One are called the bunny ears um, because, yeah, they stand up only. And then you've got the symmetrical um, type winglets, and you can either tape those or strap them on with the Velcro. Now, um, the Velcros are strictly for travelers. I would say um, if you want good flight performance, I would suggest to, to glue them. Any particular type of glue? Anything you want. Um, you can do the CA or, or epoxy. Both okay. work I've just fine. I've heard that if you're using CA, it, uh, after your first hit, it'll just come off. Um, then you haven't used enough CA. <laughs> okay. right, make sure you guys use plenty <laughs> yeah. of CA then. And so we've got these bits here. We just use our standard uh, fiberglass tape to hold these down? Exactly. Um, doesn't even need fiberglass tape. We just use regular scotch tape, the, the wide one, and it will hold on just fine. But fiberglass tape works as well. Okay. And we're going to use some 9-gram servos on here? Yes, 9-gram servos. And especially if you're using the 3S setup, be sure to use um, uh, metal, metal gear servos. Okay. You can find the metal gear servos under the servo section of the website. And so we've also got here, there's a couple of these cool bits here. And I was wondering what they were when they came in the box. Yeah, so we decided to um, pre-cut out all the, the components already. So there's kind of a su suggested FPV layout. So you got the receiver as far away from the transmitter as possible in a location where it kind of balances out on the CG. Like this. Yep. Um, and um, just just to give you the option to mount everything wherever you want. We included the negative parts for that as well, so in case you wanted to put your battery somewhere else, you can just pop that in, glue it shut, and then cut out whatever else you want. Okay, cool, so there's like one for each hole here, so we've got... Exactly. One here for you. Transmitter. That's for the video transmitter, this is the receiver, you got the battery, and you got the GoPro on the front. So some people are running it with Mobius, um, you just put that in into here, and then um, it kind of fills out, and then you can cut out um, for a different camera. Or if you're running a GoPro session, you can put those both in and then cut out the center. Yes. Awesome. And so this is just, this is some extra pieces in the bag here. So you, what have we got here? Yeah, so these are just some push rods, um, battery straps, um, the Velcro straps for the winglets, and yeah, all that, that sort of stuff. And we've also got the TVS Discovery. Now, this is one of my very first quads. And it still is one of my favorite because it's just tough. And this is what made you guys special. Yeah. So why don't you give, tell us a little bit about what makes this frame in particular so good? So what we came out with with the TVS Discovery is the integrated wiring. Um, in FPV, it's very important to have a clean and proper wiring setup. Otherwise, you'll lose range on your FPV stream and on your receiver. So all of the receiver pins here, they, they connect here, and then they travel forward through the PCB, and that'll uh, minimize any kind of interference. Same for the FPV setup. We have a core board that's also available on the website that you can just plug in here, solder it on the bottom, and then you can plug in your camera and your video transmitter right here. Um, and the core will power, uh, or will show you the power consumption through the onboard uh, current sensor, as well as just make the wiring a lot more tidy. So then if you're running a receiver that has RSSI, this has the... No, this doesn't cut that <laughs> bit out. <laughs> uh, no, this is, yeah, this is the yeah. Core Pro, <laughs> uh, the Discovery Pro, yeah. yeah. And so then on the front here, you can also mount your GoPro so that you can get all your footage 
and record it. Now, there's something that we've got here that stops the vibration. What's that called? Yeah, it's called the TBS Love Seat. Um, and that's your love seat for the GoPro. So it's kind of like a, your cinema style uh, seat. That's where the name comes from. And you just put your GoPro right here, strap it down with a rubber band, and there'll be no more jello in your footage. Okay, awesome. And then we put our video receiver coming out the top here, and then our flight control right in the middle. Yes. And we've had a few questions about the CG of the frame. Now, where is the CG supposed to be? Okay, so because this is an asymmetrical frame, so you can see the front arms are spaced wider than the back arms, there are two things you need to consider. One is the center of gravity, and one is the center of thrust. Um, the th center of thrust is about 13 millimeters or 15 millimeters in front of the center of gravity. And that's actually where, where the quad should balance. Okay, and that's what this little symbol here is on the base. On the base is the center of gravity. We didn't have a symbol for a center of thrust, so we didn't want to confuse the users. Um, the difference between center of gravity is, um, the center of gravity is, is your, your, um, your uh, wire yep. between the motors where they join, that's right here. And the center of thrust is you, you draw a line, take a perpendicular line at the center of that line, and then it will join right here, 15 millimeters in front of the center of gravity. Okay, cool. And what we've done here is we're using slightly longer arms. We're using 500 length arms instead of the 450. And um, that gives you a really nice yaw because if you're using the black arms, you're going to get an upswept angle on the motors. And so you get a really nice yaw like a tricopter when you come around especially if you want to do any aerial photography. Um, the clear arms aren't upswept, they're just flat, so you won't get that motor angle tilt. So it's personal preference on what motor and arm combo you want to run. Now we do recommend to use the Multistar Elite motors, which are the Multistar Elite 920s. And you can run a 3S or 4S on these. I like to use 4S. What's yeah. the uh, preference for battery on these? Um, you can pretty much fit any kind of battery inside. It's um, between 4S3000 to 4S5800. Um, the battery bay is 15, 55 millimeters wide and 37 millimeters tall and 150 millimeters long. So any battery that fits, you can fit in there. You don't really have to worry too much about the CG um, because there's plenty of power in these motors. Okay, awesome. And when you're using these motors, you can run the spin-on props as well. So uh, there's a couple of really good choices. So you can use your carbon fibers or you can use the plastic ones, but the carbon fibers do give you better attack and um, they're a lot stiffer. Now, would you run nines or tens? I would recommend to run nine inch props. Um, it flies a little bit smoother on it, but if you want to get that extra endurance, um, 10 inch props are, are gonna give you about 2% to 3% more flight time. One of the main reasons for getting the Discovery Pro is that it goes long range. Yeah. So when it's set up right, if we want to go long range, how far have you been? Uh, we've taken the standard frame out to five and a half kilometers, but you've got a little bit bigger mo um, spacing, so I'm, I'm guessing you can run 11 inch props on this yeah. as well. So that'll probably give you another kilometer of out and back. So you could probably go six, six and a half kilometers. Oh, that's pretty cool. So we've also got here dominator modules. Yes. Now. It comes with a circularly polarized antenna? Yes, this is a circular polarized patch antenna. It's about 5 dBi, um, and it was di designed by IB Crazy, um, who also uh, designs all the circular polarized antennas from the start. It's the other godfather of FPV. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's even more crazy than I am. <laughs> okay, cool. So does this, this just plug straight in? Yes, this is an accessory for the Fat Shark products. So um, this is a dominator module that pops into the module bay and you'll get um, 40 channels, so that's your regular boss cam A, B, and E, um, as well as the fat shark band and the new race band. Um, and what's also unique about this is it gives you a scan feature. So if you have the fat shark dominator goggles, just press up and down and it will find the channel for you. Also, no more flicking through channels. Exactly. Well, especially okay. flicking through bands is kind of tedious because you have to open up, yeah. you have to remove the antenna, you have to open up the bay, um, flick the channel or push the button to change the bands and with this you can just flick up and down to get get on the right band. Oh, that's cool. And so this just pokes through the standard bay like this and then it comes out of the uh, standard the standard housing without any changes. Exactly. And this will also work fine with the regular fat shark antennas that um, come with the kit or the Spironet antenna. Okay, awesome. I really wanted just to say thanks for coming in because we all love your products and you know a couple of questions like 
the 2S battery. People were asking why. And so thanks for explaining and coming no in. No problem. I've also been participating in the forum discussion. So. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> thanks for watching and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Awesome.